versus department. Building fees, uh, you know, all of, all of the permits and inspections and whatnot. It's been quite a while since we have done a significant revision of this. Uh, we did make some minor amendments to it back in 2006, which is still eight years ago. So we just felt like it was time to take a look at this again. I know that the staff and uh, community development has spent a good bit of time on this. And so I'm going to turn it over to them and let them uh, go over this and, and explain what they've done. Mr. Chairman, can I interject a little bit yeah. before that too? Um, some of the other topics that came up for discussion, not necessarily fees, but how we can better provide services. Um, and some of those things are if there's a reinspection fee, um, allowing you know, them to use a credit card or something like that um, so that they didn't, wouldn't have to drive all the way up here to do a reinspection fee. So, um, you know, if we want to approach those topics as well. Um, you know, bottom line is how do we provide the best service? Absolutely, the customers. Yeah, I, I certainly think that's fair. You know, as long as we're taking a look at the fees, we're going to take a look at the service delivery aspect of it. We're certainly open to that. So, I, Ron Tracy, yeah. The, mm -hmm. I really think the genesis is more of a, in the building department. was really crazy how much money that they were losing in the zones and that kind of just drug the rest of the department in by default. Okay. And I've never seen Mike work this way. Y'all yeah. don't know me, but I'm Mike Rucker. I'll put my hat back on there. We know you have a reputation. <laughs> All right. seen and I've spent several hours looking over this. Uh, they put a lot of time and effort into it. I appreciate it. So I'll let you go ahead and do it. Okay, and I, I think um, y'all got a copy of what I had given to Greg. And basically the way it, um, <coughs> I looked at it, it was just looking at the time it took the staff to prepare the rezoning applications, the special use applications, and the variance fees, and realized that our department was losing a substantial amount of money just processing the application. Um, I also knew that we hadn't raised our fees since I was up here in 1991. I believe these are the same fees that we charged for rezoning and variance and special use fees, which was $50 for rezoning, $30 for special use, and $30 for variance. So I did like a cost um, analysis on what it costs to process the application on the rezoning application and now I've got a special use permit because that process is very similar to rezoning now with the, the, um, the mail out the letters. Right now, and this was a very conservative estimate of how much time, this would be a very low controversy, not, not too many questions, not too many headaches, not too many research having to be done. We're losing about $600 every time we process a rezoning application. Um, it's a little bit less when you go to the Board of Zoning Adjustments. We're losing about $324 every time we have a variance to the um, zoning ordinance or an appeal to a decision. If you'll look at one thing, 
the planning commission reimbursement, we paid the planning commission members $350 for every meeting, not individually, but as a group to, to come to the meetings. So I, um, I did compare to other counties our size. I did have Truth County, they did not respond this year, but when I called them in the, about the year 2004, they were charging $350. Nancy called me after I um, had already submitted this, but I'll, I'll call Nancy again. She's a Truth County planner up in Truth County. But I compared it to Oconee, Jasper, Lee County, Georgia, which is very similar to Harris County and that they are a, um, a suburb to Albany. We have a lot of similarities with Lee County, Georgia, Madison County, Colquitt County. And those, I've got the populations listed. Um, as I said, it came just realizing how much it was costing to do the applications, looking at the, um, the fact that we had not looked at our fees since at least 1991, 94, and seeing what the surrounding counties were doing. So I had made a recommendation to raise it, and then I think we, we put it at $250 for rezoning and for special use and one fifty for the for the variance. Is a proposal. Okay. Before we get started, I have about four different schedules here of permit dates. Can we say which one is the hers is the memo. Hers is the memo. I got the hers is the memo. I understand that I'm not talking about what Tracy's talking about. I'm talking about what I have. Hers appears on the that I I got that. But I have about four of these. I need to know which one is the correct one before we start. The the one that just reads schedule of fees, that's just the fees that includes the basic ones. The one that reads schedule of permit fees revised is the one with the permit this fees. One. The one that says revised on the yellow. Okay. All right, thank you. I handed it out to you. Just a I just have a question too. <clears throat> when <clears throat> We said we we're losing money on certain types of fees. How is that happening? Um, I went through and really analyzed staff time on how it did the application. We do pay for legal ads, which that's anywhere between ten and twenty dollars. We pay the planning commission for their travel. Um, it's mainly staff time. A lot of it is the paper and printing costs. I do spend a lot of money on paper and printing. I think y'all see some of the packets that I mail out. And I'm doing a, probably about 15 packets for every rezoning that comes in. I also drive out to the sites, so I've got my travel and, um, and my staff reports. So it's a lot of staff time, money, printing, and postage. Okay, I have a question. Where does my tax money pay for? Well, your tax money pays for me to do this, but you're also, the people coming in to, to rezone, they're used to rezoning, and, and a lot of communities do this. They base it on the use they're rezoning it to. If you're going to come in and you're going to rezone your property to a residential development from an agricultural development, you're going to make money on that subdivision. So in a way, the taxpayers are subsidizing a developer coming in and making money on the rezoning. But we also make money off that development. Yes, ma'am. Makes tax money off that development. Yes, ma'am. So I guess what I, what I have a problem with, are we asking the clients that we have with community development to foot the cost? Well, let me interject there. Uh, and it depends on how you look at it. Community development, a lot of services they can bring, they provide can be looked at as an enterprise fund because they're only providing services to specific users as opposed to the taxpayers in general. So a lot of a lot of places will require a building department to be self-sufficient, like we do solid waste. It just depends on the philosophy that this commission wants to take. Mm -hmm. I think, Becky, you <coughs> correct me if I'm wrong, I think the two sides to it, and I think you're saying, 
first side is that you make them whole for everything they've done, but the other side to it is there are ad valorem taxes that come in as a result of some of these that then over time begin to offset the cost of that department. <laughs> y'all have provided are simply based, they don't look at the long term, it's, it's simply just the cost, full cost of getting this done. Yes, sir. And so it would cover that. So. Uh, I don't think they are opposing the full cost on either case. And this, no, we're not. Uh, yeah. Okay, but, but some of them. Yeah, and, and one other aspect of it, I, I don't want to sound... I don't want this to sound the wrong way, but sometimes we get zonings that really shouldn't be submitted, but because they're so cheap, they're going to go, well, let's go through the process. It's, it's probably a bad idea, but let's do it anyway. It's only 50 bucks. Um, you know, how you try to discourage frivolous lawsuits. Sometimes we do get zonings that are just ain't that good of an idea, but good luck. Yeah, I certainly think it's it's been that long since we reviewed it. We certainly need to take a look at it and, and the service delivery side. I mean, that, that probably more than anything. But, so I think just knowing the other in the background, but we do need to move ahead, look at it, let you explain these things to us, uh, let us ask questions, uh, and see where we go. And you may want to wait until January to revisit the question because then, then you'll have a full board and, and idea of philosophy of everybody sitting up here. Yeah. And, and this is a, this is just a suggestion. I mean, I'm sure we can go either way on this. Uh, some that do so, maybe not do so. I think it's something we need to. They do it every day. It's pretty complicated. It's pretty convoluted. And, and I think we need to understand that. And that's part of what y'all need to do is help us understand the process and what's involved in it so that then we can read it again, review it again, get some more information, ask questions. And it's not something we have to do uh, immediately. I think it's something we need to, we have to review it, but I don't think we, okay, we have to be in a rush to get it done. I'm sorry. No, I have one question, And as Harry says, we don't understand anything. But there is a building permit increase justification on here for a 2,000 square foot house, 30, 30 cents per square foot, which equals $600. And then the expenses are listed to process that, and it comes up to $565.94. So. Some of it came in late. We did get some of it by email. But, uh, it's it's something we need to digest, and I think uh, tonight we're happy to listen to what they have to say. If they have questions about that, they'll help us maybe study this even more. Uh, and we are going to need to come back to you too with um, recommendations on review of subdivisions by engineers because we only got the one proposal. Finger shots big time, so we've gone out for additional proposals to see if we can find them. I call several other counties, and they either, if you review them in house, they either have an engineer in house or they actually do really staff, unprofessional, I don't want to say unprofessional, non professional, non degree engineers or non even non degree individuals <laughs> look at them um, as opposed to having them reviewed by an engineer. Um, so we still need to. I really considered the rezoning application 
then the board is doing the investment application. So anything to do with building permits, you would need to discuss that with Brian and Mike. So, Yeah, the application for building permits for new homes increased. We're running about 10 behind at this point this year. Um, from last year. From, from last year. Yeah, last year was considerably ahead of the year before. Right. We were 92 in 2012. Last year we ended up with 142, so we raised that up about 50. Uh, right now we're currently running about 10 behind this time last year. Well, that's very nice. The removes have to get him on the stick for you. And part of that was due to a, a fantastic July and a really good October. Um, we had 22 in July last year. We only had 10 um, this year. I think it was a good exercise. If nothing else, just in zero based budgeting for having the department go back and look at what the costs really are. Go if we could have the stakeholders participate in the work session with us. And if no one has any objections, I'd like to ask if there are any, any home builders that would be affected by this, if you have any comments. And can, can we get comments too as far as better ways? Is it okay to ask as far as ways we can improve service? I think so. If nobody else objects, I don't want to. No, I think that's a good idea. Seem to be pushing my ideas for anybody, but I just think that we need some participation from those who'll be affected. I think you raised your hand first, equal first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Dewey Baxter. We've done about three homes a year. Did you have a little time? So here you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my name is Dewey Baxter. I've been building about 18 years now, and mainly in Harris County. And an increase in the rate of permits, it seems senseless at this point. The economy isn't back where it needs to be. Is high enough that if the inspector's office has a problem, they need to fire somebody. And I have somebody in mind for that, but we won't go into that today. But that, that's, that's my thought on it. It's, it's high enough where it is, and for surrounding counties also, if they get more than what we get, good for them. They must be doing a bit better than we are. But if we ain't in a position to pay that much more, which after we finish the homes, the, the taxes, it's going to be overwhelming, and the whole county is going to get what they need to get anyway. That's my thought about it. So well, pardon me for being so well, direct. Well, we don't want to hear you be direct. That's your statement. Uh, uh, you build single-family yes. homes exclusively? Yes. And 90 percent Harris County. We live here. We go to church here. My daughter goes to school here. We do a lot of shops in the Dollar General here. So everything's shopping has absolutely. 
My name is Dave Erickson, I'm the president of Greyhawk Homes, and I'm also here as the immediate past president of the Greater Columbus Home Builders Association, which includes the Harris County region as well. Um, thank you for the compliment about full of bunch of permits last year. I, uh, we, we did have a, have a good year last year because we acquired a particular location that was favorably priced. Just as one builder's opinion, there's not an abundance of properly priced lots in Harris County uh, for the future. I would predict with some caution that I don't think you're going to see a robust amount of growth uh, in terms of more permits than you've seen in the past. Stable and probably holding its own, but I don't think you're going to see it expand noticeably. Um, not for discussion at this session, but the commissioners as a whole probably need to step back and think about the direction that they believe that they want the county to go. Going back 12, 15 years, I don't know when the two acre rule came in, that probably was more like six or eight years. Um, there was a general sentiment in Harris County about limiting the pace of growth, making bigger lots, and you know, for various reasons. I won't get into those right now. But that definitely had an impact on the direction that Harris County has gone in terms of the type of houses, um, the location of those houses, and the cost of those houses. As the cost goes up, permits have gone down consequently. It's not an immediate effect. It takes several years before the cause and effect to take place, but it has fully taken place now. Um, that's going to impact the number of permits that go through the office, and thus the efficiency or the cost per unit that the staff of the, uh, the county has to pay for. Um, so when you get to that discussion, which probably needs to be a work session off-site, you know, a real long, broad picture discussion, that needs to be something to, to consider along the way. Um, as a developer, and I am a developer, um, adjusting the, the permit fee up to a, a fee, if I heard, of $250, that ain't going to kill anybody. And I wouldn't fight you real hard on it. Just so I ask you to be cautious and you know, don't let things get out of hand. Just one opinion. I would offer one item of caution, particularly since we have a number of commissioners here who are newer. It was about 12 years ago that the Home Builders Association and the county leadership were in a serious wrestling match over the cost of building fees and its impact on the county budget as opposed to the cost of actually running that department. It was our opinion, based upon the information we knew, that the building department at that time, this is old history, at that time was bringing in dramatically more in, uh, uh, income than the expenses justified. State law emphatically says that those fees are supposed to be in proportion to the legitimate cost. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less. There's going to be some up and down from year to year. But if you're distinctly out of, out of touch with the cost of the department and it's a net revenue to the county, that's a violation of state law. Uh, in the end, we called it a draw and we decided not to sue the county over it. But it's something I just want to remind you about. It, be, be, be circumspect about keeping those in balance and, and be cautious about letting it become a, a net revenue source for the county as an easy place to touch, touch for, for money. Self-sufficiency is necessary, proper education, proper staffing, um, proper mobility and all that stuff. You, you got to run your department. You got to pay for the, you know, the fees of the county and, and justify it. As uh, Harry and Becky, you both brought up, there's different perspectives. The citizens of Harris County, and I am one of those citizens, need to pay for the services that are appropriate. If there's extraordinary expenses to a particular niche, you can argue that too. Uh, so it's a, it's a 
economic development expense, it's a broad issue as opposed to a specific use expense. That's a, you know, six one way, half a dozen other, you can win both arguments depending how you want to play it. Um, and so those are my broad comments. Um, I'm fairly knowledgeable about the building industry. If you have any specific questions, I'll be glad to offer you one perspective of it and uh, let others speak as well if you wish. Um, you didn't give any input on some things we can do to improve services. Um, yeah. is, it, is it worth a 3% fee to be able to use a credit card so you don't have to come up here and pay a um, reinspection fee, not that you ever have failed an inspection, but if it doesn't happen. Um, you know, some things that we can you know, do to make your life better, 3% is way less than it's going to you know, cost you for gas and time. So are those things that you, you know, or maybe you just want to get with Home Builders Association make some suggestions. Um, you know, we want to provide the, you know, the best service we can for, with what we have. And I think that it would probably also help some staff time as far as you know, not having to be able to have, deal with somebody coming in and, and doing that if we can do something online. Um, your thoughts? Um, I run a fairly large staff, and so I am not directly in the field on a regular basis. The feedback I hear is that generally speaking, the building department does a pretty good job. They're fairly consistent from day to day. That's the biggest problem is when you get a ruling on do a house this way in August, and in October it's a different way of doing it. It causes a lot of difficulties. But generally speaking, they're fairly consistent, and that's that's important. Um, any builder who's never had a reinspection fee isn't, isn't, isn't doing the job because, you know, there's going to be different interpretations along the way, and there's lots of ways to build a house. And the inspectors may say, do it this way, and we say, well, this way is approved too, and sometimes they just disagree. And there's some gray areas in the code as well. Um, with regard to the fee, it is a huge, huge inconvenience to come pay for a reinspection fee. My one um, request would be, that if a builder is willing to put some funds on account, you know, for instance, we when we were doing a lot of permits in Harris County, for us to have to go get a $25 or $50 check to get it up here, I mean, it costs us $100 or so just to manpower and move it all around to pay for that fee. I would much rather put $100 on deposit and you, you just hold it there. I'll be way ahead in the long run. If you have that capability, I don't know if you do, I would encourage you to consider something like that because it would be a great convenience. Or for, I'm not sure how you do that. That's broadly stating that making it more convenient to pay that fee before the CO is probably the certificate of occupancy. And that's a trade term for the finish up. Paying for the CO is before then, maybe, maybe you don't have to have it now for the inspection fee. But before the next week or two, you need to get that check up. So in the course of normal cycling of business, we can drop off and pay for a reinspection fee. That would be another way to approach it. Um, because the CO is, is the gatekeeper keeper that says you finish the house. And if you get a reinspection at framing, it's going to be weeks before you get to the finish line. And if we have the time to come pay for that before we get the certificate of occupancy, that would be a huge, huge convenience as well if the first option I mentioned is, isn't uh, like isn't possible. So those are a couple ideas that might be helpful to you. I, um, how do they? I and I, I looked up the fees uh, in other in surrounding counties except for Muskogee. How do they? How do our fees, the proposed fees, compare to Muskogee's? I did not look at the proposed fees in particular, and in truth, I wouldn't know if I could compare them off the top of my head accurately. I'd be glad to work up a check with you if uh, it makes a difference. And you're welcome to inquire to the Home Builders Association. We'll pull together numbers from the various counties that we deal with. It might be helpful. Yeah, but I, would, I have extra copies of the proposed fees if you want them. Yeah. Um, I think my answer is going to be more generic than that, Nancy. Thank you. However, Every municipality does it different, and thus the numbers run all over the place. And so what's called a fee in one location is considered a service in another, and, and so how you classify them makes as much difference as what the number is. Um, so I'm not sure I can give you the proper answer. Mr. Williams. I have the right here. For instance, 
for instance, uh, we've got some places they call water service part of the fee in, in different jurisdictions. And I think I'm referring to Auburn when I refer to this. And, you know, they, they move the numbers around a lot and just you got to really work hard to tease them into proper categories in order to get true comparisons. I spent several hours this morning doing that. And, and, but the answer is going to come down to a simple one. If you were only doing 10 permits a year, for the department to be stable is going to come down to deciding which way we're going to argue it, whether it's a county broadly based expense and a subsidized amount, or whether it's a specific user expense. And that's, you guys need to settle that discussion first. But if, if to be dramatic, let's say you made every county, every lot in the county had to be 10 acres. I guarantee you two years from now, you're not going to have a lot of permits, okay? And as a result, he's going to be processing very few permits with the same staff. Your cost per unit are going to go up dramatically in the process. So it's not a perfect answer. You know, given the permits you have now and where you think they're going, you need to set your fees. You got to be stable financially, depending upon which philosophy is being discussed. So I, I, that's, I didn't answer your question, but I hopefully offered some perspective on where it comes around. In the end, you make, you make the best judgment of what you think is right for the county. I'm not going to be one to here to argue dramatically one way or the other, as long as you keep it under control, and it's in general balance with the true cost of running the department. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Houston and I live in the county and I work here and uh, but I build in a lot of other counties in Georgia and I have to say uh, Harris County is is not the cheapest but it's not the most expensive and uh, for the service we get I think they do a great job and I think uh, maybe if we expanded the department or increase the service, you know, the uh, increase in fee would be justified. I mean, uh, even in planning, I mean, we, we rezone stuff, you know, several other places, cities, counties, and uh, it's a lot more expensive than here. But uh, I think, uh, like Dave said, I think if we want the county to grow, we really need to relook at the one acre lot. And uh, I think that even if we do a, a some sort of kind of a, you know change where you do so much green space, but you can still have one acre lots, I think that would help the uh, county and the building department grow. Uh, lot and I, I think it'd be good for the county It'd get uh, some more affordable housing in the county and uh, help help on the taxes the uh, <clears throat> I, don't, I think they're probably running as lean as they can go right now and if we get any kind of pickup uh, the building Inspection department is going to need help. I mean, they have a man, two men, if it ever, if it ever come, you know, picks back up. So you're looking at, uh, you're going to be looking down the road at increased expenses. You know, and I, I don't know how y'all say you lose money, you know, on a, a on a fee, but uh, I surely wouldn't be losing any money, you know, if I could help. So I mean, uh, you know, it's kind of like you go back to you pay, you pay what you get, you know. So if you get good service, you pay a little more. But uh, I, you know, I can't. Uh, I was astonished. We didn't get to see the fee increase before we came in, but. I'm amazed that Harris County hadn't gone up since the time y'all said it. I mean, uh, that's just amazing. I mean, I'm, 
glad we've been able to keep it down that low, that long, that low, you know. But uh, I think if to really go back to getting the county growing, getting subdivisions built, you got to relook at the one acre lots, more green space, kind of a swap off type thing. How would you envision the use of that green space within a subdivision? Um, would it be something that, that the developer or builder might be willing to put in a you know, green area for so that the community can have ball, you know, ball games or whatever out there? Or Area usually, what you think? usually in a county like this, uh, more people want more natural areas, just left undisturbed. And uh, what I see is like, and it'd be, you know, you'd uh, probably turn it over to the homeowner association. That's what we normally do: is turn over a green space to the homeowner association, and then they they. You know, if they want to do something with it, they can, but it's more like, uh, you know, a couple of acres set aside down there, and it might have the creek in it, you know, and it might be a wet area, but it'd be uh, natural. It would never be, you know, usually it wouldn't be disturbed unless the homeowner said, we're going to make a park or we're going to. Uh, make a ball field or something like that. Well, certainly the developer wouldn't want to go to a huge expense or something that they're not going to be able to sell and make any money on it. That, that's increasing. Unless you put we cost. Yeah. So, but a lot of a lot of places I've seen, you know, uh, I mean, it gives the children a place to go. You know, like lots of times you'll find them in there. In, uh, kind of like at the creek, I've seen them you know, in a green space that had a creek going through it. You know, like the old days. Find the tadpoles, you mean? Yeah. I mean, it was just, and it, and it was a natural green space. I mean, that's what it, that's a, a instead of one of these big playgrounds, you know, that people got to keep up and all, uh, like a lot of subdivisions out in the counties, in these other counties, uh, have the one acre lots and then they'll make put in so much green space. And there is, there are other ways to take care of that, to maintain that. And, and uh, what was that seminar I me that I went to? Conservation easement. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was a seminar that Tracy was kind enough to, to get the information to me about. And I went down and sat in on that meeting. Conservation easements mm -hmm. are a certain one. And the, what's, help me with the name of the uh, the Chattanooga Valley Land Trust. Right, yes. Chattanooga Valley Land Trust is in there. Go. There are several, and the Planning Commission has been discussing this mm -hmm. for some months now as the ways that you could do that and have the, the green space, but there are still a lot of questions to be answered as to number one, how do you maintain it? Who maintains it? But they have been discussing it for several months. And I think that part of that is having some standards up front. For example, there's a green space in our neighborhood that um, I'm waiting for winter so I get in there and figure out why it's cold mosquitoes. <laughs> but uh, this is an opportunity for uh, an ad for the uh, swab analysis coming up in October, don't you think? Because those are some of the topics you might want to discuss as far as economic strategy. Yeah, yeah, it could be. We're in the early stages of, of doing a, a, and there have been several smaller ones done, but of doing a, a SWOT analysis, which is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats uh, for Harris County, uh, looking at Harris County as a place to live and do business. Uh, we, will be, we will be certainly taking the information we've gotten from past seminar or meetings that bring some of this forward, but also then having a, another one uh, to add to that and grow on it and, and begin uh, to actually begin working with, with some of the issues that we need to address. Um, there's a thing of new cooperation 
between the uh, Chamber of Commerce, Board of Commissioners, uh, the county. Uh, I, I think it really bodes well for Harris County and help, will help us set some directions and really get community input in that and begin, to, begin making some concrete plans to move that way. Uh, so when that comes available, uh, we certainly have expressed invitations to people representing certain areas within within the county and I don't mean geographic areas, I mean you know, professional areas, whether businesses or schools, whatever. Yeah. Uh, doing that kind of thing. But also we can hear some from, from some of the other citizens of the community that maybe are not it won't be that we get way down in the weeds because that's that can really make that kind of thing go astray but to really kind of come up with the framework that we can before you leave, uh, the, the idea of green space, I think, is a, is a good one. It's certainly something I'm interested in. Uh, I would certainly uh, be willing to, to look at that as opposed to uh, the two-acre lot size. If you offset uh, that with, with sufficient green space, uh, I think there may be a balance that I'd certainly be willing to look at. Um, and the idea of green space, I think, is a, is a great idea in theory. Um, you, you mentioned homeowners associations. Our experience uh, up here with homeowners associations has, has not been very good. Um, a lot of times a homeowners association uh, is established at the time of the development, but then it, it basically is defunct after a while, and, uh, and the homeowners don't maintain it. And, uh, and so if they don't maintain the charter for the homeowners association, It sounds good. I, I, would, I would want to see how we can actually make that work from a maintenance standpoint. And if it's just totally natural, maybe there's not no maintenance required. Yeah. Uh, so I think mean, it's certainly something to look at. Well, under the conservation easement, there are a lot of options. And just uh, and the plan commission, as I say, and they've had a great many discussions on how we can do that. But there are just some things that need to be ironed out as to and and the. Seminole that I went to the conference and I went to had a great many options that I had no idea under conservation easements. And even they would take take that and they would go out each year and inspect that to make sure it's up to standards on. But there are a lot of other moving parts to that before we can even get to that far. But that might be But who would something. be responsible for that? Well see that's the thing. It's that's the other one of the other moving parts. But it might be a good idea to have them come and uh, kind of give us a quick rundown of exactly what they did briefly because it was very it was very interesting to me and there were a lot of uh, uh, a lot of other ideas that I certainly wasn't aware of so it might be a good idea just to have them come and give us maybe a ten or fifteen minute brief on what they actually can do. All right, good. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other builders, developers wish to weigh in on any of that? Okay, then, Ron, if you would, uh, you want to touch base on a little bit on some of the On some of the discussion. I mean, yeah. thank you, builders, for being here and expressing some of the things that you had. Uh, Billy made note of some of those. Um, at, and there again, this is a proposal. This is not anything we're after. I said before that we're, we're not actually wanting to get new things for us or anything like that. If you look at the one sheet that says building permit increase justification, which is based on a 2,000 square foot house, the current rate of 30 cents a square foot is 2,000 or at 2,000 square feet is $600. If you break down everything that we do from the taking in the application to the plan review. The issuance of the permit, to all the inspections that we do, the mileage incurred, um, the processing of the building inspections each day as they come in, answering questions from contractors as they call us to find out what they what they need to do or what alternate method may need to be done. Um, 
to the process of the closure of the permit, and then I only added four dollars for paper and printing costs. That's not much. Uh, that totals out to seven hundred and thirty eight dollars. So right off the bat, we're $138 in the hole. As these houses increase, which most of the houses in Harris County that we have been doing are, size. in size are much larger than 2,000 square feet. Um, and so with that, each one of these inspections usually increases in time. A rough on an inspection will take much longer. And we're dead. When we go and do a rough inspection, we're doing four services at one time, which is structural, mechanical, plumbing, and electrical. In Columbus, you have to call a different inspection in on it, and sometimes you can get them all lined up in the same day if you're lucky, but a different inspector comes to do each one of those four. So that's what we do, and the same thing with the final, we're doing four inspections at that time as well. Um, yeah, five soil erosion as well. Um, our my proposal or our proposal um, from thirty cents was just to go up two cents, which equates to only forty dollars on a two thousand square foot home. It's nothing. Um, some of the other things that you see on this page uh, on on the schedule of permit fees, which talks about the building permit fees. This one. Uh, a lot of what we're dealing with here, um, the only other one that was really, some of it was verbiage. Uh, one of the things that the, we always had listed outbuildings, we would like to see that to match our ordinance, accessory buildings, and that the permit be, if the, there's no permit, if equal to or less than 500 square feet instead of 800 square feet. Now that's an accessory building. And the reason we're proposing that is because 800 square feet, we've got people living in it without our knowledge. 500 square feet, it gets a little bit more tight. Um, That's like maybe space for one car. Exactly, exactly. Um, uh, the, the, and also on that, if it does go more than 500 square feet, it's only 10, it's still, it matches what we do with barns and uh, other livestock or agricultural which is 10 cents a square foot, instead of um, just having, a, a, I think at one time we had a $50 flat fee. Mm -hmm. No, we did not, excuse me. So basically the big one there is to, train, to change that square footage from 800 to 500. Um, the one of the ones on the commercial and industrial, for years the tax assessors have evaluated our uh, plans when we took them over. Um, what I have found in just the two years that I've been here is they are greatly underestimated. Um, that's the reason we're proposing an evaluation estimated at $85 per square foot, and this is on a commercial job, um, unless the value is provided by the builder. And basically, you know, Jim, I know you asked earlier about what about evaluation fee base versus a, a per cent per square foot or uh, amount of money per square foot? A lot of counties, and you'll notice at the top of mine, based on valuation, a lot of the surrounding counties that I looked at, or excuse me, the counties that I looked at were, they do that based on valuation. And the counties that on my, um, the comparison table, the counties that I chose there, Lee County, Madison, Oconee, Pike, and Upson, and West Point. West Point being in the county, I thought that made sense. Um, but I remember, um, I believe it was Commissioner Ivermilk actually said that he wanted counties that are relative in size and relative in economic, that kind of thing. So that's the reason I went with this. Um, I can easily get, I actually have Columbus's right here. I have Phoenix City, and I, I still, unlike Trace, I couldn't get anything from Truth. Um, but we can work on the website. Sir? On their website. Um, but there, there's some things there, that, and some of it was there, yes, sir. It was. But I felt like that y'all wanted something, 
they're actually larger than us. So I didn't even think y'all knew that. Well, actually, in my case, I'd much rather it be Drew Merriweather and Muskogee because that's what everybody I know compares you to. They don't compare you to Oconee. Right. Even though Oconee's probably much closer uh, in this, as comparison right. otherwise. And, we, and that's fine. We can do that. And, and I'm, not, I'm not asking for anything to be voted on by the way. No, um, and we won't. I think Jim's comments are correct. And I'm glad we've got what you've done because mm -hmm. it does look at some that are out of this area but, but similar in size. But I do think we need to look at the ones that are surrounding us too because okay. that's, that's where what about, Erickson and, and what about Troop? Houston and uh, they're doing it. What about Troop? Um, you I mean, want Troop looked at as well? I mean, not Troop, uh, Charlotte. No. Okay, thank you. And actually, I looked at LaGrange, too. And I have LaGrange. I actually have LaGrange's uh, on here. But their stuff, being it just the city, mm -hmm. it, it was not comparable to anything. We, theirs was so different than the way we do it. It, it was hard to compare it to what we do. Um, and the two times I printed, the first two times we printed it out, it came out black. They got that. Something about when you print certain documents, they just come out black. I don't know what. And if I can say one other thing, I'm not opposed to looking at increasing fees at all. But my take on all of this is, since 2008, it's been a nightmare as far as building goes, and I know that, and y'all know that. I would like to see us look at something maybe at raising fees incrementally rather than than we do this all at once and double fees. Um, so if we could, you know, so because the home builders, the builders, in fact, everybody that has a small business is just now beginning to see a little bit of light. And what I don't want to do is discourage any of our local builders from building in Harris County and maybe have the possibility of something happen that happened across the river down in Fort Mitchell. Exactly. I do not want to see that happen in here. Okay. Um, one of the things that that does, <clears throat> excuse me, that does need to be addressed is the reinspection fees. And you'll notice on here that we're giving them the first one's built into the permit. The second one, because we actually have to go out and do the inspection, <coughs> spend time, money, and gas to do, we're saying that on that second inspection, you're going to get twenty-five dollars. <coughs> Anything after that will get charged fifty dollars because the thing that we've been getting lately, we go out and do an inspection and they're not one, they're not either ready for the inspection even though they've already called it in, or two, um, they they want us to do their punch list and that's that's not what we're here for. We're here to go in and and, and check. And make sure they meet the code. Um, there, as a builder, they should be doing that before we go. Um, so that we want to kind of deter some of that by doing these. Uh, for years, the inspection fees has always been what was it? third, third inspection, third, third inspection. So you got the first two free, and on and after the third one, if you failed in, then you got a twenty dollar reinspection. And I do agree that we need to have, like Mr. Erickson said, we need to have some other way than these guys. It is tough because this is what we ran into before. You get some builders, they go out of town, they find out their building has failed, and then they can't get anybody out there to pay the permit fee because they're out of town. That's happened before. So if we could get something in, in place as far as what Mr. Erickson said, either by credit card or by Put money in the pot. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know. That's something we got to look at. That's what I'm looking at from the finance side, as far as you know, have to have, make sure we have absolute accountability on it. Right. Checks and balances. Do not do not want to go out to the site and take a check in hand. I, I don't I don't want that responsibility put on our guys um, to receive a check on site. And typically, when we go out and do an inspection and we fail it, nobody's there anyway to give us some. Uh, a, a check. So. 
Any questions you got on any of the other fees? Uh, if you flip over, and this was uh, on the second sheet, or first sheet, I'm saying. Um, initial fees and subsequent reviews. That, the multifamily, the commercial office, industrial, and CUPD, PUD resort, all of that stuff right there is this. That is when somebody brings us plans. This is not, it's not actually a plan review of the building, okay? It is a plan review of the site. This is all concerning site fees, which because we don't have an engineer, we got to have something. Um, and, and the sticker shock that we did get from the other one um, really raised my eyebrow. Um, so all of those fees right there are, are probably going to be, they might not even be close. I looked at several counties, um, and this is about as generic as I can make it without getting crazy. The only other one that, that, if you look down under subdivisions, if it's a minor subdivision, which administratively I can do, we're changing that from $10 a lot to $20 a lot. And then for subdivision, a major subdivision, which has to go to the Planning Commission, which again, that $350 fee incurs, we're changing it from $10 a lot to $20 a lot, and then the final review fee of $150 flat fee instead of $100. You're proposing. Proposing, yes. Sorry. And we're about out of time. You guys can ask me to wrap up. I'm, I'm good. I'm just questions that y'all may have. Right? And you're more than welcome to come by and we can talk about them. Um, I'm an open book. So. I, I do. I want to again thank you, uh, both of you, your, your staff. The work that you have done to pull this together uh, is something that we should review. Uh, and review and fairness to the county as well as to the builders and developers and, and the citizens. Uh, so I do appreciate that. Uh, I think we do need to look at those others that are close at hand also and uh, have, have some other discussions. Appreciate the comments from uh, you builders and developers that are here tonight. Let me add one that came up before concerning if Mike was out and we needed somebody to review the plans. Yeah. I can review the plans at full point but for that final signature it has to be a licensed person, a, a certified plan reviewer. <coughs> Mike and I sat down with a list of about 11 names that we found that were in this area that were certified plan reviewers and the ones that I talked to said that they would not take on that liability. Okay. So, but we've never had a problem with him being out. Uh, I mean, he was out eight weeks when I first started. After two weeks, he went into heart surgery mode. And during that eight weeks, we never had a problem. Not one hiccup. So we brought him to him. Okay. Good. Thank, Thank you all you. very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks.